In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today I want to talk to you about the spiritual war. Our spiritual life is one where we continually struggle against ourselves, our self-opinion, and proud, proud mindedness. It is a struggle aimed at breaking our will so we can dedicate ourselves to God and live in a manner where we only do His will. We have to shift from a worldly orientation to one that is oriented towards God's kingdom. It is a shift from a world filled with temptation and evil to one that is oriented only to God and doing good. The task is to tame the intellect and free it so it can be directed by divine grace. It is, it is an inner struggle involving our other actions. It is a bottle or grant proposition called spiritual warfare. Saint Theophan tells us that the attacks we must deal with are soul-related and bodily powers. In the body, the source of passion is pleasing the flesh. There is sexual lust, gluttony, love of pleasure, sloth, comfort, adulterous feelings, absent mindedness from prayers, wrestlings, willfulness in everything, unseemly lauder, idle talk, sleeping, daydreaming, carving the pleasant and all manner of pleasing the flesh and lust. Secondly, is in the soul. In the mental part, opinion, exclusive belief in one's own intellect, criticism, attacking the mind of God, doubts, puffing up and uh, arrogance, curiosity, mental plundering, st straying thoughts, and in the essential part, passions that uh, shatter peace and tranquility of heart or various kinds of uh, pleasantness and unpleasantness, wrath, envy, hatred, anger, revenge, judgment, contempt, vainglory, ambition, pride, boredom, sadness, sorrow, depression, joy, cheerfulness, fear, hopes, and expectation. How do we get at the root of this? This is our challenge, says Saint Theophan, Theophan says that the source of all this passion is, first of all, self-love. At the root, he says, are pleasure, conventions, and pride. The way to conquer them is to cut off pleasure by self-directed wrath, conventionsness with um, an acquisitiveness and pride with humility. When it comes to the war against our passions, we are in many ways like little children. We really don't know what we are doing. Just as a child could be unintentionally poisoning himself by eating the wrong things, so we unintentionally arouse the passions by paying attention to the wrong things. Like a child is attracted to the red berry on a bush, so our attention is easily attracted to thoughts that are not good for us. It is only through instruction and experience and well attention 
that we learn to discern our thoughts and to direct our attention away from poisonous, hurtful and passion arousing thoughts and towards Christ, towards what is good and true and beautiful. My dear ones, it is really a bottle for our attention when we let the waywardness of our body and mind disturb us too much, we have in a sense already lost the bottle, but not the wear. So, don't give up. Whatever we give in the passion itself or give in the despondency because we are so disappointed in ourselves that we are still tempted by passions, when though we had repented of long ago, spiritually, the result is similar. Our attention is drawn away from God, and prayer and a reflection on the real needs of those around us. Now, this does not mean that I repent, does not mean that I fail in my thoughts, is just as bad as going ahead and doing it with our body. By no means is this the case. That's like saying tasting a bit of poison is just as bad as swallowing the whole bottle. Yes, both are unhealthy. Certainly, both are eating poison. But one is much easier to recover from than the other. But still is better not to play with fire. This is the real spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is about bringing our thoughts into obedience to Christ. But we must do this gently, recognizing that our flesh is weak, but was nevertheless be trained like children, or horse or dog. We again and again gently turn ourselves away from that is worse and toward what is better. With practice, it gets easier. Saint Isaac the Syrian says he, it never goes away so long as we are still in the body. I have heard from an old elder who, who says bodies are as good as dead. As it is says in the Bible regarding Abraham, I have heard from these men that even though they have not been able to act on such passions for years, still they have occasional thoughts of sexual immorality. Go figure, like I said, struggles with the passions are not really about the passions. Spiritual warfare is about our attention, controlling our thoughts and mind. When our attention wanders from our Creator, from the awareness of God's narrowness, and from the continual contemplation and prayer of God to God in our hearts, then the passions, the, f the flash, flashy red poisonous berries get our attention. Part of what makes the age to come heaven for some and hell for others is exactly that we are freed from the tyranny of our twisted and broken bodies and minds. For those who battle in their minds and hearts against the raging of the passions, those who long for health and peace in their minds and bodies, those who cry out continually, in their minds and hearts, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. For these, the new, the new heavens and new earth will be the answer to their prayers. In the age to come, 
we will be free of all that has tried to lure us away from our loving Lord. However, for those who find a light in their brokenness and in the twistedness and perversion of their bodies and minds, then the age to come will be rather hellish outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth is the way that Jesus Christ himself put it. The least hellish aspect for this in the age to come will be that the perversion they have delighted in no long no longer exists for sin stop at the grave. The greater aspect will be in a escapable knowledge of the love and loving help of God and others that they have spurned throughout a lifetime. But as St. Paul says, I am sure of better things for you, things that accompany salvation. Wherefore is our lost uh, is our lot so long as we live in this evil age. But as St. Paul also says, our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It's not against uh, other people, no matter how evil they seem to be. Our warfare, warfare is against our own thoughts and fears and passions. Our warfare is to bring every thought into obedience to Christ. This is how we defeat spiritual wickedness in high places. We each have besetting sins, passions, fears, or despondent tendencies. We each have our unique battles to fight. Our own unseen martyrdom dreams sometimes play a part in bringing to our awareness areas of sin and brokenness we have been dwelling in. And uh, in our childish foolishness, we sometimes get quite cop- caught up and, and even addicted to sins before we even realize it. But once we do realize it, we can repent. We can turn our attention to the only one who can save us. We can turn the eyes of our heart to Jesus, the Son of God, who has mercy on all the sinners. My dear ones, the main challenge is to maintain an awareness of the attacks so we can counterreact them. The main enemy is our thoughts. Our actions are, are always preceded by thought. This is the battle ground. The pattern of our actions is the onrush of thoughts, contemplation, delight in it, desire, passions, attractions, resolve, and then the deed. Therefore, St. Theophan says, all the ascetic's attention should be directed inside himself at thoughts, desire, passions, and attractions. It should be, most of all, incidentally, be directed all thoughts for the heart and the, the will are not so mercurial as thoughts, and poisonous and desires rarely attack themselves. They are most often brought of thoughts. From this, we can make a rule, cut off thoughts, and you will cut off everything. The bottle ground has been identified, and next we will deal with our own selves. But remember, through prayer, Christ is always with us. When we turn our attention to Jesus, then Jesus fights our battles. One of the desert fathers said that 
trying to comfort our own wicked thoughts is like trying to drive off wild dogs by throwing biscuits at them. When we end up feeding the very things we are trying to drive away, but if we turn our attention to Jesus, to the one who saves, the one who made us and loves us and calls us to himself, then the barking of the dogs fades away into the background. Then Christ himself fights our battles and we return to our natural place as worshippers of God, as those whose minds and hearts are attending to the only things that are needful to us and to our salvation. Amen.